Seven years ago, I was combing my hair and I noticed a lump, a small lump behind my right ear. It didn't hurt, but it did concern me. So I went to the doctor. He told me it was just a lymph node and that it was nothing to worry about. Over time, we moved a lot. I had went to various doctors and they would tell me that either they didn't know what it was, but then some would tell me it was benign, and, but they really didn't know what to do. When it first appeared, no one noticed because it was just a small lump. Now, if somebody sees it, they gasp. It's still growing. It's getting to the point I can't cover it with my hair. So every day, you know, the anxiety gets worse for me. The last doctor I went to, he knew what it was. It's a parotid gland tumor, but he said he thought I needed to go to an expert. However, I have had a lot of trouble trying to find an expert. I don't like when the wind blows. I, I don't like going out in public. Just to be seen, it's hard and I always keep my head down. I used to go to ball games and I used to be so outgoing. I don't want people looking at me anymore. And it's, it's just changed who I am. With the growth on Angie's face growing in size, we sent her to Dr. Ryan Osborne and Dr. Jason Hamilton at the Osborne Head and Neck Institute here in LA, hoping to find some answers that she's desperately been waiting for. So why don't you tell me what brought you here today? After, I guess, about two years ago, I went into like a deep depression. Um, I can't wear my hair up. I sort of lost myself. Um, and why can't you wear your hair up? I mean, it's just so big. Can I see? Mm -hmm. Our job working together is to get the tumor out, Make sure your facial nerves are protected. Dr. Osborne is probably the best at it, okay? And then my job is to come in and make it look like no one was ever there. Yeah. We don't want you to have to deal with this problem anymore. No. My yeah, husband, he said that there's pictures of me with my hair back. And he said, I can't wait to have you back. It's okay. It's all right. This is, um, this is a tough moment. You know, it's, um, when we talk, we don't even consider this really a cosmetic issue. Uh, it's not, you're trapped. Yeah. That's how I feel. You, you've been, you, you're trying to cover this thing, but you're, you're hiding yourself too. Well, I can't be normal. Yourself. And I'm just tired. And I honestly prayed that if it was something, that it would just go ahead and take my life. We're looking at you as a whole person. We want to make you functionally whole, uh, emotionally whole, and get your family back together yeah. so that your kids can have their mom again. I have that's what I want. And your husband can have his wife. Yeah. We're going to review your records. Dr. Hamilton and I will talk. Okay. Uh, I'm not telling you that we're going to take this case on. Okay. But I am telling you that we're going to seriously think about it. It's been just a few days since that visit. Join us now, Dr. Hamilton, Dr. Osborne, and Angie. And Dr. Osborne, you obviously did a thorough examination. In that examination, you know, what, what did you find? Well, first I found a, a very courageous woman. Absolutely. Yeah. It's obvious to me. It's not a malignant tumor, but it's having malignant characteristics that it's robbing her of her, her ability to interact with her family, to interact with society. Um, it's clearly a, a tumor of the parotid gland, which is a large gland located on the side of your face that produces saliva. We have one on both sides. Um, the main issue with it is trying to remove a tumor like this. What's on the table, the risk, is complete and total facial paralysis, permanently. You would look as if you had a stroke, but you're never gonna recover. Wow. I mean, is, is it fair is to it, say, you know... Does it hurt? If I sleep on it, like if I turn to sleep, uh, it'll hurt. Um, it'll have shooting pain sometimes. Is, it, is this one of the larger that you've seen of this type of tumor? 
I wish I could say it was the largest we've seen, uh, but it really isn't. We've dealt with uh, much larger. We sort of have a reputation for being referred cases that are complicated, so we've seen mm -hmm. cases like this and mm -hmm. probably even more dramatic. And Angie, I, I know it's been such a long road. How, mm -hmm. how do you feel that at least you've, you're now have met the experts and at least you know exactly what is going on. Does that, it's, does that help? It's like there's a weight that's been lifted mm -hmm. off my shoulders. And I still don't want to go out and, and not have my hair. Of like this not. is really bothering me. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, but I mean, do you, I'm so do you, excited. Do you go to restaurants still? Or do you, or do you just kind of hide it and go on about your business? Or has this really changed the way you do it's things? It's changed the way I do things. Uh, my daughter turned nine on Wednesday and she uh, plays soccer. And I would used to go and sit on the bleachers. I sit in the car um, because I don't want to get out. If the wind blows, it's a bad day. And um, I promise you, there's no one here judging you. Mm -hmm. Not one person. Not one person judging you. Mm -hmm. They're just glad that you have opened up. And I know you're uncomfortable. I know that. Yeah. But just know that we're all in yeah, your camp. I have Ooh. anxiety. I have, it's caused me to have like high anxiety and depression. Sure. But you can't be who you used to be. Yeah. Well, you, you, know, you know what's important is you're here today for a reason. <laughs> and I know you reached out for a reason. I did. Yeah. And so you mentioned it, Dr. Osborne. This goes beyond just the tumor itself. So you came to the right place. We're back with Angie, Dr. Hamilton, and Dr. Osborne. And the two of you, what I, what I love is you work together. Mm -hmm. You work together to take care of the problem, but also to, to give someone like Angie her life back. So surgically, the two of you can put a plan together to optimize mm -hmm. the situation here for Angie so that you know, not only can she recover from this physically, but emotionally as well. Absolutely. Uh, we, we both work in concert but we're both focused on two different aspects, which is how we get this result. Um, my goal here is to remove this tumor with no paralysis, and I'm committed to that. But the reality is when you're removing a tumor of that size, this is somewhere around 5% of her body weight. It's just as if you had a wow. baby. There's mm -hmm. gonna be excess tissue, excess skin. And even removing that, you trade one deformity for another deformity, which could leave her still trapped. And that's where Dr. Hamilton comes into play. That's the second aspect, because this is as much of an emotional issue as it is a surgical issue. And what we have to do is, on the inside of this tumor that we don't see is that everything is flattened and pancaked down, right? And then everything on the outside of the tumor that's normal is stretched out like a rubber band. Mm. And we have to balance those two things back together so that when we're done, she looks completely normal and feels emotionally whole and is willing to go out. If we just mm. take the tumor out and she's still stuck at home because she's embarrassed about the way she looks, then I wouldn't feel like we accomplished anything. But Angie, I, I know that we have a few pictures, right, that, that you all have brought. Absolutely. I want you to look at these to give you some hope. And these are our patients that we've worked on who've had similar cases to Angie. And um, oh. they were... Oh, wow. They're in the same emotional place where they didn't want to interact with people anymore. And that's where we come in. Um, we take on these difficult cases. You know, I, I said I was going to think the case over, talk it over Dr. Hamilton. Mm -hmm. and we did. And we know that finances were also an issue for you. Mm -hmm. uh, we were happy to, um, to tell you that we also have a nonprofit organization that's going to pick up all the costs. I, I want you to know what it was that made the decision very easy. Uh, when we had the consultation, I said, if you go forward, you, this is the chips you're pushing on the mm -hmm. table. You truly may not move your face. No, no. And I'm not trying to be dramatic. I'm serious. Yeah. This is a high-risk case. 
are you prepared to move forward? And she just said, I'm ready. I'm ready. And Thank you for being brave enough to share your story. And certainly a special thanks, Dr. Norman and Dr. Osborne. Thank you Absolutely. both so very Absolutely. much. You're welcome. And this is why you never give up hope, folks. That's we'll right. Be right back.